Hello guys, welcome back. Let's talk about the Mossberg 500, a shotgun with a long-standing history of excellence and success. It was first introduced in 1961 by Carl Benson, a gun designer. It was designed mainly for hunting and to compete with Remington 870, the most popular pump-action shotgun at the time. About three decades later, Mossberg 500 caught up with the sales of the Remington 870, and since then, the competition between the two guns has been fierce. Even though it was initially designed for hunting, Mossberg also tried pitching it to the military in the 1970s. The shotgun failed to meet the mil-spec 3443E protocol, which dictates the gun should not have more than two malfunctions after firing 3,000 rounds. While the standard model failed to meet the criteria, some variants passed the test, and thus, the US military began procuring these handguns at a limited scale. However, the prices of these variants were quite high, but Mossberg managed it by driving the sales of other variants in civilian markets. Currently, the Model 500 constitutes an entire family of shotguns with varying barrel sizes, chambers, and designs. The standard model holds 5 3-inch or 2.75-inch shells in the magazines and one in the chamber. While it is available in 20-gauge and 4, the 12-gauge is the most popular. I have also been using a 12-gauge for quite some time now, and because of overwhelming requests from you, I decided to take this out one more time. For the purpose of this video, I also dusted my Remington 870 to compare with Mossberg 500 and fired tens of shots with that as well. It is because the choice ultimately comes down to these two guns whenever you are looking for pump action shotguns. So let's find out whether the gun is good enough for your desired purpose. I have been using Mossberg 500 long enough to forget what lousy packing it came in, but it all came back as I ordered a new gun for the purpose of this video. The gun came in cardboard packaging and was not wrapped in styrofoam sheets. However, the feeling of disappointment quickly passed as opening the box revealed a stellar gun, a magazine stopper, and a safety lock. The overall aesthetics of the gun are excellent. With a plain matte black finish, it oozes excellence. The first thing you will notice while holding Mossberg 500 is that it is incredibly lightweight. At just around 7 pounds, it is one of the lightest shotguns on the market. While the concerns of increased recoil are there, you cannot ignore that it offers unbeatable maneuverability, making it an excellent gun for personal and home protection. Furthermore, Mossberg has added a rubber recoil pad at the butt, which in theory should absorb some of the impact. Like all Mossberg 500s, the standard model also features aluminum receivers. And this is where most gun enthusiasts draw the line between Remington 870 and Mossberg 500. Steel and aluminum have their pros and cons, but I tend to lean towards aluminum because it delivers a smoother cycle over the course of time. Steel is durable, but loses the smoothness when it begins to attract rust, especially in humid conditions. Again, it is a matter of personal preference. You may like steel better. Furthermore, the barrels of the Mossberg 500 are interchangeable, but you would not need to change them if you opt for the standard model. The finishing and the overall quality of the barrel are good enough to last a decent time. Another aspect where Mossberg 500 shines is the controls. I know most people prefer Remington 870 in terms of control, but I just find Mossberg 500 controls exactly where I want them to be. The safety on the top rear of the gun is easier to control than the trigger guard safeties on other shotguns, and it works well for both right and left-handed shooters. I also find the location of the side release button on 500 more convenient, because it is placed right behind the trigger guard. I do not have to extend my fingers as such as is required on 870. As discussed earlier, the Mossberg 500 passed mil-spec 3443 tests by the US military. It is a testament to the gun's durability. The gun is tested to check reliability, interchangeability, and endurance. Not many guns emerge victorious from these tests, but Mossberg 500 is one of the few that have passed them, and it is because of this quality that the gun was adopted by the US military. Even though it is being phased out now, 
the gun has spent a decent time in the services of the U.S. security forces. I am not vouching for the quality and durability of the gun just because it has passed these tests. I have also put it through rigorous tests. To be honest, I would not have been confident to pursue these tests if the gun hadn't gone through mil-spec 3433. So I fired a couple of hundred shots with it, and just one of them misfired, which could be because of a faulty round. The gun had engaged the primer even with that round. Besides the single round, the gun fired smoothly and did not encounter any jam. Although I have been using the Mossberg 500 for quite some time now, using it side by side with the 870 has made me realize a couple of things. There is no particular problem with the action, but I find the action of the Remington 870 a little smoother than the Mossberg 500. Don't get me wrong, the shotgun's action is tough enough and makes that classic noise when you pump it. It is just that when you use it with Remington 870 on the side, the latter feels smoother. The recoil of the Mossberg 500 is surprisingly manageable despite the incredible light weight. I do not know whether it is because of rubber padding on the butt or because of something else. What I can tell is that the recoil is significantly less than what you would expect from a shotgun of such weight. While shooting the gun, I emptied the magazine by firing the shots in tandem with each other, and surprisingly I was able to hit the target dead center. While the original barrels are good enough, I tried testing it with a 28 inch barrel to observe the difference in performance. The longer barrels provided a significantly greater range than 18 inch standard ones. With the longer barrels, I could take down everything I missed with 18 inch barrels. Furthermore, the recoil with the longer barrel was also more manageable. However, the longer barrel was relatively difficult to cycle in chamber, but it is a problem that you would encounter it with any shotguns with long barrels. The trigger on Mossberg 500 requires a bit of an extra pull, but it does not comprise the crisp. Furthermore, when getting a shotgun, the trigger is rarely on the list of priorities. Now that you are aware of the quality and the performance of the Mossberg 500, the question is, what are its applications? Well, fundamentally, it is a hunting gun that can be used to shoot down all sorts of prey. But because it is versatile and switching the barrel is also convenient, you can also use it for home protection, shooting competition, and even skeeting. However, if you are using the Mossberg 500 for home protection, Switching it to a longer barrel would be best. It makes the gun more reliable and increases the range, which is vital for home protection. The Mossberg 500 allows a decent degree of personalization. You can upgrade the stock, optics, and even barrels. The aftermarket of this gun is extensive. I have kept it as a backup home protection gun and hence personalized it accordingly. To make it even more reliable in the dark, I have attached the Surefire M600 weapon light. I have also gotten myself a Magpul SGA stock which provides me with multiple sling attachment points and a pistol texture which I love. The point is there is enough room for customization which lets you tailor the Mossberg 500 to your requirements. That is it for today's video, we hope it has made your decision easier. Stay connected with us to learn more about guns and the laws around them. We will see you at the next one.